So round six, uh, I'm playing Grandmaster uh, Vladimir Belus, who has also been a very difficult opponent for me. Uh, I lost to him twice last year, both times with white in open tournaments. And uh, both those games were very tough. The first one, he like totally outplayed me. The second one was closer, but he, he definitely deserved the win. He was like putting pressure like the whole game. And uh, before last year, we had played twice already. And uh, the first game we played, I lost, also with white. And then one game I drew, also with white. So I, I have one draw out of four games. So he goes c4, g6, d4. Knight f6, knight c3, bishop g7. e4, d6, h3, castles, bishop e3. And so this, this is the system. It was actually funny. During the game, I was thinking, you know, if he plays h3, in our first game last year, he played knight d7 against me. And it was a really interesting idea because it was like bishop e3, e5, d5, h5. And the idea was to go like bishop h6, trade off the dark square bishops. And it's really like tricky and strategic for black. I was thinking about maybe playing this just to see like, you know, what what he's gonna do against it. But I thought, I don't know, he, he's probably gonna know something here. And yeah, it's like, it, I haven't really looked into this position from the black side a ton, so it didn't really make, make sense to go into it. So I, I just play my normal stuff, but then he goes bishop e3. And uh, yeah, and it's like, he, the, he plays the system that I played against him, you know, uh, last year, both times, um, which, you know, at first you might think it's kind of like, I don't know, kind of like a troll or something, but actually I took it as like a sign of respect. It just means like he likes the line. He thinks it's a good line and that's why he's playing it. Cause he's trying to, uh, he's trying to win, win the game. It's not because he's trying to like, <laughs> like beat me with my own line or, or anything like that. So anyway, I go knight a6, uh, g4, c6. Black has a lot of different ways to play. This has always been one that I thought was kind of interesting from Black's point of view. And uh, I mentioned this in, in the original video that I made on this line um, for white. And that Black tries to go knight c7, you keep the um, you keep the center very flexible and eventually play for b5. What often happens in these positions is Black goes e5, white plays d5, and then we get this very close center and I generally kind of like these more for white because I just feel like the bishop is bad. White can now castle queenside a lot more easily. And uh, yeah, if white is going to be attacking on the king side, for me personally, I'd rather just try to keep the, the position open. So c6, knight g2. This is pretty normal, knight c7, knight g3. And uh, now b5. And I believe this was my, my prep as far as I uh, remember. I didn't really review this before the game because... Um, he, he's played a lot of different stuff against the King's Indian. And so I wasn't super expecting that he would go for this line. I thought he would go for, for other stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was pretty sure this was working. The idea is if white takes, uh, let's say with the knight, then this is immediately losing a piece. Queen a5 check. And uh, if white takes with the bishop, then black just goes rook b8. And then next move is a6 and black is winning the, the b2 pawn. So white has to like defend the bishop somehow and then just a6 and this one is hanging. Or maybe he can go like queen e2 and try to defend everything, but black is supposed to have very nice compensation here. It's kind of like a nice uh, nice and active binko. Because in, like the binko gambit, white definitely, you know, generally doesn't really want to like advance their, their king side too much and, and make a lot of uh, weaknesses. So this is, I think, kind of a nice version. So that was the idea. He started thinking around here, so he might not have been super aware of this line, I'm not sure, but he ends up going g5, uh, which, okay, hitting the knight, knight d7, h4, and this feels very logical, I mean, he's just getting his, like, play going on the king side, and generally this is what white is playing for, but I remember when I was, like, analyzing this one, I don't know, I didn't really remember looking at this, so I, I wasn't really sure if this is, like, a unknown thing or if it's good or not. So I'm basically just kind of on my own and uh, yeah, <clears throat> just trying to like make my own decisions uh, at this point. So now black has like different options here, like rook b8, maybe taking on c4. I end up going b4 here to displace the knight and uh, okay, uh, save my pawn on uh, knight e2. And now the idea is to follow it up with c5. And c5 would be the response on like knight a4 as well. I was thinking this might be possible and then I'll just go c5. And white, I don't think, can really take this one because 
Uh, I'm always taking on b2 at the end and then hitting the rook, and I also have bishop c3 check. And so this felt uh, not very good for white, like just too many weaknesses and white's not castled. Uh, and otherwise, if white is not taking on c5, then, okay, knight on a4 is not really going to be great, and I want to go like knight e6 and plant my knight on d4, queen a5 somewhere, knight b6 maybe, and it just looked like, okay, very, very nice structure for black. So before he goes knight e2, I play c5, and uh, yeah, now I basically am just at some point going to take on d4 or maybe play knight e6, and the, we're actually going to get like a Marazzi bind, of all things which uh, you sometimes get out of the king's Indian, especially when c5 is played and c takes d4. But again, it's a Marazzi where white played like h4 and like g4, g5. And I mean, generally like white's not doing that, right? And white's just kind of slowly building up. Knight on g3, I felt like also not as good as if it was on f3. So around here, I actually started feeling like my, my position's really, really not, not bad at all. And... Um, yeah, it started to feel like, okay, I just want to go take and 95, 96, and it kind of started to like things here. So bishop g2, c takes d4, knight takes d4. I also thought about bishop takes d4, but uh, I wasn't really sure because then, okay, maybe I go 95 anyway, or maybe um, maybe e5 as well is, uh, is possible, and then playing like 96 and playing on the dark squares. Um, so knight takes d4. Yeah, this felt more natural at the time anyway. Uh, but now I go knight e5, and now the game actually gets very, very sharp. Because I'm going after the c4 pawn, and I want to play knight g4, where the bishop on e3 doesn't have a ton of great squares, because I'm hitting the bishop, and then bishop f4, there's always e5, bishop d2, the knight on d4 is going to be hanging. And if white plays like rook c1 here, then knight g4, and the bishop has uh, no squares. So uh, I thought this was kind of interesting. I was expecting b3, and, and this was played. Uh, now knight g4. White has to go bishop c1, because, yeah, just nowhere else to uh, to save the bishop, and white can't give this one up. And, yeah, here I, like, had already had in mind what I wanted to play next. I don't think I had, like, fully decided, but because um, I was going to think about maybe playing, like, h5 here, or maybe h6, I thought was interesting. Um, but uh, I really just wanted to play the move 96 here, which to me looked quite strong. Uh, now, 96, there's a lot I had to calculate, so we, we both started like burning time here because, okay, of course, knight on g4 is hanging, but if queen takes g4, there's knight takes d4, and this just looked very nice for black. I mean, rook on a1 is hanging, queen is hanging, every, everything is, is hanging. And uh, if knight takes e6, then uh, bishop takes e6, and again, rook on a1 is hit, white has to go like rook b1, and then, yeah, maybe I go queen b6 here, or bishop c3 check. I mean, it just looked very, very nice for black. I, I didn't really look further. I just felt like, okay, I'm going to have a, a ton of nice options. Because um, now white's position is just very, very opened up. There is knight c6, which uh, was definitely concerning, because white hits the queen. And my first thought here actually doesn't work. I was thinking knight takes f2 was kind of a nice move. So if knight takes d8, knight takes d1, rook on a1 is always hanging. So I felt like black is always at least fine here, and, and probably just uh, just much better. And uh, But the issue was that if king takes queen b6 check, bishop e3, queen takes c6, I realized eventually white has e5 in this position. And I'm losing the rook, and I didn't see anything I can do. So... This one I didn't like because just king takes f2. I also thought about immediate queen b6, but then knight takes e7 check, king h8, and yeah, I wasn't really sure what's going on in this position, but I thought, okay, it's probably nice for black because I'm hitting f2 and uh, and a1 as well, but there is queen takes g4, so I wasn't totally sure about this one. But I felt like instead of queen b6, I should actually just go queen c7. And I, I just thought this was much easier because I defend e7, I hit the knight, and uh, yeah, if queen takes g4, I can maybe take the rook. I can also just take this one first, and then t I'm turning to take the rook or play bishop c3 check. Both are, are pretty annoying for white. Um, and here there's no e5 because the bishop on g2 is undefended. So I realized this is not really so great for white, just the rook is just hanging in, in all these lines. 
and uh, instead white has to go bishop b2 to uh, just defend the knight and try to keep the position stable. And here, okay, I was thinking I have a choice. Like, I can definitely just trade everything on d4. And I thought I'm, I don't know if I'm, like, better here, but I definitely thought I'm at least not worse. Like, queen b6, for example. And I just have, like, you know, very good knight. I have, like, nice bishop. I have, like, some h6 ideas. Mm, to me, it seemed like a very decent position for black. But, yeah, I always wanted to be careful about stuff like this and e5 and rook is hanging. And, yeah, I'm never really, really sure that, like, how much if at all better I am here. So I was really very unclear about my chances. I didn't even I didn't even necessarily think I have an advantage. I just thought I'm at least fine and that this is playable. But uh, I also have this option to go knight f4 here, which feels very ambitious because I'm just kind of like jumping around with the knights and I'm just like hitting the bishop. And uh, you don't really want to do this if you don't have like, you know, great follow-up. So you have to really make sure that, you know, you're going to have... Uh, some attacking chances because you don't want your pieces just kind of floating around but the more i looked at it the more i felt like actually i'm getting some some real play now if bishop f3 then i would probably go knight e5 and then i'm hitting this one and i'm hitting knight d3 check so that's very annoying for white so he goes bishop f1 and uh yeah now he's considering like a bunch of different moves here like queen b6 and uh an e5 and, and all this stuff um, I, yeah, I should mention, I also considered queen b6 in this position, but then I thought just knight e2, and I didn't see anything so clear, just felt like we're going to be, uh, trading a lot of pieces here. So I felt like, it, yeah, if I don't go knight f4 right now, I probably won't get another chance. Now after bishop f1, I again considered it here too, but, uh, again, I, because the threat is e5, and, um, this one is hanging, but I didn't quite see the follow-up after I think it was like queen d2 and uh, yeah I wasn't exactly sure um, I was thinking about maybe e5 here but yeah I couldn't 100% just decide on on something to do so eventually I just go e5 in this position and uh, after spending a lot of time my idea was just like you know my pieces are super active I gotta go f6 so that was really what I wanted to do, is just play like f6 in the position. I was considering to play it here, it just looked so ugly that I couldn't couldn't bring myself to make the move. I, I think it's not bad though, I think it's totally possible as well. But I decided to go e5 first, and uh, if knight b5, then queen b6 I think is very strong. Hitting f2, queen d2, I can go a6 here, and um, can't really, well the knight is trapped, and if knight takes d6, then there's rook d8. And this looked very, very good for black. Um, takes, I'm not sure if I can take here, but I think I can just take this one. And this just looked fantastic. Like I should be, I should be winning somehow. Um, so instead white goes knight c2. And uh, I'll be honest, I mean, the plan was to play f6, but I actually didn't realize that at this point, uh, it's actually an only move. Once I go e5, white is turning f3 and just like trapping the knight, which I saw in a different variation that I, I wanted to be careful about playing e5 because then my knight on g4 loses the chance to ever come back. Um, but here somehow I just didn't realize like after knight c2 covering the e3 square, now f3 becomes a threat. So uh, f6, I mean, this was the move I was going to play anyway, but it turns out, uh, I think, to just be like an only move for black because... Yeah, otherwise f3 and, and the knight is just lost. But now f6, f3, I, I do get some serious counterplay. So I'm kind of like forced into a peace sacrifice here. But I really, really didn't mind. Because uh, while well, I'm taking this one, if white takes on g4, I'm taking on h4. The knight doesn't really have a great square. And like knight e2, bishop takes g4, for example. I felt like black is doing absolutely all right here. Um, and probably more than all right. I mean, I have like a ton of pawns. I have like all my pieces getting in actively. White is not castled. You know, white's pieces are, are super, super passive. I felt like it has to be more than enough. Like like black should be better. Um, or if white plays h takes g5 in this position, which is another option because my knight is still trapped, then queen takes g5, f, g, bishop takes g4. And I wasn't like totally sure about this position. I feel like I should have enough, like maybe queen d2, h5, h4, bishop h6, 
this kind of play and it's very hard for white to castle and it just looks like black's pieces are super super active i wasn't 100 percent sure but it felt like very very like i would much rather be black here that's for sure i wouldn't want white's position at all um so yeah it kind of works out uh for me after f3 i take and he ended up spending a bunch of time here and he ends up playing knight e2 and then once he did this one then i was like oh man i must be winning now because he didn't he didn't take any material he didn't take the knight and uh this move however is very very tricky though so of course it's it's not easy for black um, because he wants to take on f4 and go queen d5 check and pick up the rook and so i can't just be giving up uh, all the material um but uh I, I find a nice solution here bishop b7 and now if knight takes f4 then i can uh take back with the rook of course queen d5 is covered and if white ever takes on g4 then i'm taking on e4 I can also maybe take with the rook but at minimum i take with the bishop i hit this one and the uh, position explodes. I have a couple of pawns for the piece, and I felt like white's king is just going to get mated. Because, like, for example, rook g1, I have queen b6, and this one is a threat, and the rook is hanging, and it just looks over. And uh, this also works if black doesn't take, if white doesn't take on f4. If white takes on g4, then I take here, and I'm hitting the rook, and I'm also threatening knight d3 check and taking the bishop. So once I saw bishop b7, I was like, okay, perfect move. It looks great. I develop, I stop queen d5 check, and also... Now it's not even easy for white to take on g4. So he hasn't even taken the piece yet, and I'm already getting all this counterplay, and my pieces are getting out. Um, so I thought, yeah, it's it's got to be winning uh, for uh, for black. Bishop b7 wasn't my first thought, by the way. My first thought was actually queen b6, threatening mate. Uh, but then white can take on g4 here, and uh, and then I didn't see a win. Like I was desperately looking for like this one, you know, but there's no mate or. I was praying that this would work, you know, but again, takes and there's no mate. Um, but no, none of it really worked, but bishop e7 I liked very much. Now white takes on f4. I played rook takes f4. And uh, yeah, you can't really take on g4 because bishop takes e4. Uh, so he goes bishop c1. And now rook is hanging on f4. Knight is still hanging on g4. But uh, for the moment, I didn't think white is actually threatening to really take anything. Because if they take the knight, then uh, I take on e4. And if they take the rook, then I can maybe go ef. And this is just like a classic uh, classic King's Indian sacrifice. This has been known for like years. I think the first guy to sacrifice the rook here was Gligorich in like a famous game. You could probably Google Gligorich King's Indian rook f4 and you'll, <laughs> you'll find the game. Um, so I definitely wasn't worried about giving up the rook on this square. So yeah, just queen b6, just threatening mates. White's forced to go queen e2. Uh, and now rook af8. And now just bring in all the pieces. And uh, if white takes this one, then bishop takes e or rook takes e4 at this point is now just much stronger. Um, and then uh, if white takes on f4, you know, actually at first I was thinking to go rook takes f4 here. Because again, takes, I have rook takes e4. And I'm only down the exchange uh, with, you know, nice attacking chances um and very importantly if white castles i have knight f2 which i was uh, happy to see because i get the exchange back and now totally winning but uh, actually i didn't like this one h takes g5 and i actually just like couldn't find my next move in this position and i am down in exchange and the knight now is like totally trapped and so i actually just wasn't 100 percent sure like what like what i'm doing like how am i uh how am i getting in here because this kind of stuff doesn't work. Takes, takes, rook takes, e4, takes, this one, king, d1, and there's no there's no mate. Um, so, yeah, instead I realized I have to go ef here, which is technically, you know, a rook sacrifice uh, if white takes on g4. Um, but I think I had already analyzed this earlier. And uh, so basically what happened was... Uh, I was considering this one and I thought, okay, EF4 looks nice for black, like takes F3. If queen E3, then we're taking this one and we win the rook back. If queen uh, F2, then we have bishop C3 check and we're winning this one. So basically I feel like this is a just very, very nice attack for black. And minimum after something like queen D3, I can always take on A1 if I really need to regain some material. 
and then something like either like rook f4 or rook e8 here and i'm gonna win this pawn and so th this felt like i have a great attack i wasn't sure like i'm 100 winning or whatever but it looked really really nice very very promising um but then okay i was also thinking about rook takes f4 and this one actually made more sense to me for some time until i saw hg then i was like oh yeah i don't don't really like this so much so then when I returned to it, I realized, you know what, maybe e takes f4 is the way to go. Because, okay, we open up the bishop. We also have bishop c3 check ideas. And, uh, of course, we're threatening to just take the rook. The knight gets, like, this fantastic e5 square, maybe the e3 square. And so only critical line is really if white takes the knight. And, but but this, I think, is just not really, not really working. Um, so, yeah, like I mentioned, I think this was all right for black. And... Um, Actually, I think I, I checked this moment with the engine and it was saying, oh yeah, bishop c3 check and queen f2 is actually really, really killer. I didn't see this one. Uh, this is just so, uh, yeah, just for, for completing this, but the, the engine finds this idea. I think the point is to take and then there's queen d2 mate. I didn't see this during the game. I was more just gonna take on a1 most likely and play something like this or rook f4. But I felt like this one is also very, very promising for black. Um, uh, in any case, he plays bishop h3, which I think makes sense because I, I think he was realizing that that f3 position was was really uh, unpleasant. Um, but uh, okay, bishop takes a1. And it wasn't my first instinct to just take the rook and get the exchange back, but I realized, well, if I, if I take the material back, then I'm just, everything about black's position is better, like we're... Uh, we might be a pawn up at some point. We have like better pieces, safer king. Like, yeah, let's just take some material. And if bishop takes g4, then bishop comes back. And uh, king moves. We take on h4, and this just looked, looks like black has a huge advantage. Yeah, like extra pawn now, two bishops. Very nice dark squared bishop. White's king, again, not super safe. Um, so he ends up just playing knight takes a1. And now he's choosing here between knight e3 and knight e5. At this point, I'm, I'm definitely feeling like really, really confident uh, about my chances. Because, okay, now I'm not even down material. Everything about my position is better. There's like a knight on e1. But there's still like a lot, a lot of tricks uh, left in, in the position. Uh, so number one, I was um, thinking about this one first. And, uh, and actually, I was thinking about knight e5. This one made the most sense to me. And then I thought something like check, king g7, hg. And um, in this position, I was thinking queen e3 is, uh, is kind of a nice move. The point being, I'm threatening now knight takes f3 and knight d3. And uh, if takes takes, then the rook opens up on the f file. And once I take this one, the e4 pawn also falls and white's position just collapses, right? I'm just winning all the pawns. So that looked very nice to me at first. Then I was thinking, hmm, how about knight e3? This looks even better because on knight e3, I want to go like queen d4 and, and this knight, like if, uh, like, check, for example, or hg, and then I maybe have queen d4, knight c2, and queen c3 check. And I win the knight. So that also looked very, very good. Then I realized uh, if he goes bishop e6 check, king g7, hg, if I play queen d4 in this position, white has rook takes h7. And I'm getting mated. And I was like pretty close to <laughs> playing knight e3. I mean, not like I had my hand over the piece, but I was like, hmm, knight e3 looks, looks really good. Then I saw like, oh my god, he has this trick. And I realized I should go knight e5. Because on, on check and uh, takes, my original idea, queen e3, inadvertently deals with this because I pinned the queen to the king. So I already had this in mind, but then once I realized, oh, in this position also, white is turning rook takes h7, then I was like, yeah, I need this queen e3 on the board right now. So I end up playing knight e5. He starts with hg, which is a lot trickier, rather than throwing in bishop e6 check first and then hg because then the the threat would be uh a lot more obvious so he plays hg here now any move like queen d4 then bishop e6 and uh okay i would have to play knight f7 probably black is still still uh fine but um 
yeah, I didn't definitely didn't want to uh, allow that. And instead I just go queen e3. And now I felt good uh, about uh, about this one um, because we're forcing the uh, the queen trade and we're forcing it with fe because again the threat is knight takes f3 or knight d3 like if rook f1 then knight d3 check and queen c1 is a nice mate but otherwise we're taking here on f3 and everything is collapsing so white is forced to take on e3 fe3 and uh, yeah now i felt like it uh, more or less over like if knight c2 i can take on f3 with check and then uh, take this one, for example, and then g5 is falling as well. And this is hanging and this, like everything is just hanging and we're just winning all the pawns. And uh, yeah, if king e2, then rook takes f3, knight c2, and rook f2 check. And he can't take on e3 because the knight is hanging. So everything was looking good here. White played bishop g2. And uh, yeah, at first I was just going to take and, okay, this looked winning. As I take, and I'm ready to take here. Um, but then I notice, like, I can, uh, I can maybe do something else. Um, and I realize actually I could take here. Bishop takes e4, with a very nice idea in mind. F e4, rook f2, and I'm hitting the bishop, and I'm also threatening knight d3 check, king d1, rook d2. And once I saw this idea, it was like hard to hard to avoid because it just looks so strong. White can go bishop f1 to stop the mate, but then rook takes a2, and I get another pawn. The knight is lost. I'm getting my piece back. White's pieces are all in the back rank. Knight is super good. E-pawn is strong. Like So this just looked absolutely uh, crushing. And yeah, somehow I just felt like, um, I don't know, this one seemed less convincing uh, to me. So I ended up going for bishop takes e4, which which I think was objectively fine. Because it very forcing, forces bishop f1. And uh, now rook takes a2. Um, but I didn't really calculate it all the way out. I just felt like it should be winning, and I felt like I would figure it out. But I really wish I looked maybe a little bit deeper. Because he does go rook h3. And uh, it's, still, it's still a little bit tricky here. I take on a1, king e2. And now the point is like he's maybe picking up this pawn, which I really didn't I didn't realize. Like he has this rook h3 and um, actually maybe not holding on to this one. Because if I go knight g4 here, then rook g3. And I didn't know how to continue here. Like rook check, maybe king e1. And uh, knight is hanging, pawn is still hanging. Um, at this point, I should mention it's like move 33, 34. So definitely we're in time trouble. Uh, I was up on the clock. I think I had more time, but I'm only still down to like maybe maybe like 10 minutes here or so maybe maybe a little bit more I'm not sure but yeah this didn't really look I mean okay some position like this I do feel like black is much better because all of white's pawns are weak and I'm still up a pawn from before but uh, I felt like I could have gotten more than this so I was starting to feel like uh oh like <laughs> I'm starting to blow it like I, I should have been completely completely winning like two pawns up no counterplay nothing um, so I was looking for a cleaner solution, and I think I found a pretty good one. So I end up noticing that knight takes c4 is actually quite strong. So this game has so many tactical ideas. <laughs> it's like <clears throat> I had to find <clears throat> like a bunch of uh, a bunch of moves. Sorry guys, my voice is <clears throat> is going because I've been doing recaps all day. <laughs> but but yeah, this one uh, ends up being quite strong because b takes c4, I'm pushing b3. And now the b pawn is just running. And uh, white has a really hard time stopping the pawn. Um, only way I saw was like king takes e3, where if b2, then bishop d3. This is uh, this would not be clear. Like rook a3, I'm trying to take, but rook h1, white stops the pawn. But uh, on b3, king takes e3, I can just take here. So I just win the bishop. So that was kind of my, my main calculation is that here, king takes, I can just take. Now I'm threatening to push b2. He has to go like rook h2 to stop the pawn. And then I'm just basically in time with a5 and rook b2, a4. And uh, his rook isn't uh, isn't stopping the pawns and I'm just, uh, just gonna be promoting one of them. I can also like win it slowly, but I think the pawns are just like immediately uh, breaking through here.
like here, push, push, and yeah, nothing white can do. Um, so once I saw that one, I was like, oh, wow, that looks really good because I'm also defending the pawn and I'm threatening to give check. Um, and I did see if he goes rook f3 here, then I would have knight d2 because I was a little bit worried about this idea, like here, bishop h3, bishop b6. Another shocking idea where all of a sudden white gets a perpetual because king g7, rook f7, and the king can't get out. But I do have knight d2 and he's not in time because I'm just taking everything. Um, but he takes here, I push b3, and now he plays rook f3. And I didn't actually realize that he could do this. So again, you know, I kind of, I didn't see his, his last resource. Because now he wants to go bishop h3, bishop e6 check. So if I push b2, bishop h3, and then if I promote here, then it's just a draw. No way to get out. Um, so fortunately, I have rookie one check. I might have another idea here. I, I, I'm not really sure. This was the only one I could find with uh, b2, bishop h3, and, and rookie one. But uh, thankfully, it's good enough because he has to take. If king d3, I just promote with check anyway. Now I promote with check, and I get an important tempo to deal with um, the, uh, the threat of bishop e6. So just queen takes e4. I can also play like check and take this one, but queen takes e4 is simple enough. I cover this one. And uh, now with any kind of checks, I'm going to be able to always like pick up the g-pawn and, and it's basically impossible for white to uh, to create any more, any more counterplay. So he tried rook f6, but now just queen c2 check. If king takes pawn, then queen c3 and I take the bishop. Uh, so you play king f3, but now queen f2 check. And uh, he resigned here because next um well i'm just taking the rook and uh and promoting so this is kind of a easy simplification so the game could have ended with yet another tactic or if like king e4 i can also play like queen h4 check and okay at this point black has many ways to win but uh but yeah so that was uh that was it so super sharp game and uh you know i tried to be pretty honest about what i saw and, and didn't see and i, I definitely didn't see everything or even nearly everything but i was really happy with how i uh played it overall like starting from you know this point with b4 c5 i felt like i had to find like so many super active moves like knight e5 knight g4 knight e6 knight f4 e5 uh, f6 then like sacking the piece you know bishop b7 like every one of these moves was like difficult to find and play um, but, uh, yeah. And then even in the end game at this point, you know, honestly, I probably could have just made it simpler for myself by just taking on F3, but okay. I felt this one was very strong and I was definitely feeling, feeling tactical. And this just looked, uh, like the best way to win the game though. I don't know. I think this was probably maybe, maybe a little bit risky. I don't think it, the game really needed all these, uh, adventures, uh, until the end, but, uh, yeah, I, I was super happy with the game. Definitely one of my one of my better games. And it's always super fun to play a game with like so many tactics and so many tricks. Uh, you just feel like exhausted <laughs> at the end and you feel like you got this uh, this huge rush. But uh, yeah, I was very happy to win this game. And, and now um, after this one, I was on five and a half out of six. And uh, that means uh, I was leading the tournament now. So I would need actually just a draw in the final round to win the tournament because uh, there's one other player with five points uh, Fide Master Ezra Chambers and uh, I would play him in the last round